Hi guys, it's Mark Zikri, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zikri of Space Command. And today I am wearing my Occupy Mars t-shirt from SpaceX. And by, and by the way, this is a little stone from Stonehenge. It's the, uh, it's not, I didn't ship, uh, ship it off Stonehenge itself, but it's from the same quarry as uh, Stone, Stonehenge was quarried from. Pretty cool, I got that when I was at Stonehenge. But we're gonna talk about Mars today. And the reason is because uh, Hulu just debuted a new series that they made in association with Britain's Channel 4 called The First. And it's not the first story of the first mission to Mars, but it is um, in a long line of such stories. And, um, and, and I, my thought was to head this, to title this video, uh, What Happens When Science Fiction is Written by People Who Don't Write Science Fiction, because uh, this is very much what this is about. It stars Sean Penn and Natasha McElhone, or if that's how it's pronounced. And she was an actress who I saw in some movies some years ago that I strongly disliked. Um, the American Solaris with George Clooney was one of them. She was sort of the the girl who comes back from the dead, uh, generated by an ocean planet. It's a long story, but the novel by Stanislaw Lem is terrific, and the German, and I'm sorry, the Russian film by Tarkovsky is one of my favorites. So Solaris, but uh, again, we're talking Mars, the first. So um, Sean Penn is cool. It's his first TV series as a lead, and he. Um, it's so funny because his face is so worn. He's, he looks like a basset hound, basically. But he's worked at worked out to a fairly well. So he's got this incredibly buff body with this very worn face. So it almost looks like he's been photoshopped. <laughs> but he hasn't. It's his really real body. So kudos to Sean Penn for working that hard um, to get into great shape. But um, the problem with the show is there's two different kinds of science fiction, particularly in television, oddly enough. And, and also it's in literature as well, but to a lesser degree, which is there are science fiction shows that are written by science fiction fans, people who love the genre, certainly Star Trek The Next Generation or the original Star Trek or uh, Twilight Zone or there's tons and tons, Battlestar Galactica, the one Ron Moore did. These are people who really know the genre and love it and are knowledgeable about it. Then there are, are science fiction series written by people who aren't science fiction writers and, and the problem is they, they sort of put the focus where it's less interesting and or they fall into the same uh, story tropes as we've seen a million times. And I'll, I'll get into this a little more specifically. Uh, a year or two ago there was a miniseries called Mars and I think they're doing another season of it. The National Geographic did and Imagine Television and it was kind of boring and uh, just kind of like, oh well this is how they go to Mars and some people will wig out and they'll you know, they'll open the airlock and people will die and it's just like obvious stuff. And this is very much similar to what the uh, first man on the moon movies were like before we landed on the moon and so destination moon which is like well i'm floating up to the ceiling what's going on well there's you know weightlessness in space uh you know cookie or whatever it's like oh god but um but the, the reason these are these don't wear well is because they're very obvious it's like okay here's you know here's how this works step by step and it kind of becomes tedious the other way though to do this story not wonderfully, is that you just are more interested in the people than in the thrilling adventure of going to Mars and what that would actually mean to the people who are actually doing it. It's funny because um, uh, in, now, oh, well, let me just jump in and say what, what I find problematical with the first. It cost over $50 million, so that's, I guess, about $5 million an episode. Uh, the entire first season is, it, it opens with a tragedy. I won't go into specifics, but the entire season is them getting ready to launch to a manned mission to Mars. So the entire season is just characters interacting and having their problems. Uh, Sean Penn plays the leader of the mission and he's got a daughter who's, you know, coming off drug addiction and the, the wife ostensibly committed suicide and blah, 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 blah. And, it's, and there's a, and uh, admirably, there's a black astronaut who's in a gay relationship. She's, you know, the, uh, the actress is very, very good. The relationship seems real. But again, it's like a soap opera where the focus is on these people and their interactions and it, you could take Mars out of it and you could probably do essentially the same show more or less if you know and just put a different rationale in for well we're going away you know to explore something on earth or going away to war or whatever and it's like okay the, the problem I have with it is this two two problems one is um, everyone I've met in real life who's either an astronaut or a space scientist they're thrilled by the intellectual challenge of exploration, they love it, as do I, and it's and even Ray Bradbury, people like you know who, I, who I've known. I mean, the the idea of Mars, the idea of this amazing planet where we may find life, you know, it may be down there in the caverns where 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 there's liquid water. They now know there's lakes under underground 
uh, on Mars, and there was surface water uh, billions of years ago when the atmosphere was thick, like, like Earth. It was much more Earth-like billions of years ago uh, and before its uh, atmosphere thinned. So it, it's very possible there's life on, on Mars uh, and, um, you know, primitive life, but life. And, uh, and to find that would be astonishing. It would change everything. And, and even if there weren't life on Mars, it's an alien planet. There's many, many fascinating things to explore on it. It's just a, a wonderful adventure, uh, much more interesting than, moon, than the moon in many, many ways. And, um, and, and so I, I, I feel strongly that the first manned mission to Mars, it will be people who are just dying to go there and who love it and are thrilled to be doing it and know that they're risking their lives, but it's hugely worth it. They won't be hangdog. They won't be, you know, emotionally, uh, you know, it won't be... Uh, I was going to say it won't be neurotics. They, you know, I, I, and, and that's not really fair, but it's just like this show, it's all about the Sturm und Drang and, oh, should I go? Should I not go? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. And this is not the energy, the thrilling, positive energy that I find in space scientists and astronauts. The, the, the fact that they are doing what they most love in the world, it is, it is incredible. Their families are supportive of them, um, and, and they are just doing exactly what they've wanted to do all their lives. And, and the fact that Elon Musk, wants to, Elon Musk wants to send big rockets to colonize Mars is, is exciting and wonderful. And, uh, and very much like when I was a kid, when the, the books about Mars, Martian uh, exploration and colonization, it was always some, some crazy billionaire. Some, some wealthy guy who would fund it, not the government. And of course, if we wait for NASA to send manned missions to Mars, it's not going to happen because the, politi the political will is not there. It's funny because, um, you know, Ron Moore is doing a show for Apple where uh, the Russians beat us to the moon, the manned landing on the moon, and so we continue our manned missions into space, and it, co it covers the 40, 50 years between then and now in this alternate history, and that's very fun and very cool. But, um, but so, so the first is interesting to watch for the kind of missed opportunity in a way. It's, it's created by Bo Willimon, who uh, created the American version of House of Cards, does not have a science fiction um, background as far as I can tell. And, uh, you know, Sean Penn is a, is a good actor. The acting is good. The one who plays his daughter is good. Uh, I, I much prefer Natasha McElhone in this kind of role. She plays sort of a female, you know, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk kind of character. It's fine. It's fine. This visual effects are good. But to watch an entire season and they don't even get to Mars. And theoretically in the second season they would. And, you know, we'll see if the second season is better. But right now I can suggest a book, a TV show, and, uh, and something else about the first trip to Mars or Martian exploration that I uh, strongly re recommend that you check out uh, as something uh, stronger and more fun than, um, than the first. So, f so first of all, let me recommend a TV show that I watched uh, recently. It's called Missions. It's a French TV show about the first manned mission to Mars, and they get there and they find a, a Russian cosmonaut from the 60s who's ostensibly been dead for decades and, and he's the age he was back back then. And it's very fun. See, I, the, the thing I love about good Martian stories is they don't tell you the expected story. Oh, we're going to Mars and we're going to encounter, you know, the, the technological difficulties and blah, blah. It's like you have to surprise us in some way with the story that's not the expected story. And so I, so I strongly recommend Missions. It's a lot of fun. It's in multiple languages, including English. Uh, and, um, and, and so it's Russian, French, English, etc. And, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's, you can watch it on Amazon Prime if you get a, a subscription to Shutters. And I think you can even get like a free month of Shutters so you can watch this. And, uh, and I hope they do a second season because I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was well acted, well written. Uh, so that's one, Missions. And then uh, if, you're, if you want to hear a great radio show, one of my favorites, uh, there was a writer named Charles Chilton. And he created a radio show in England called Journey into Space. And this is the novelization that he wrote of the first story, which was a mission to the moon. And then it was such a hit that he then did Journey into Space, the Red Planet. And this is the novelization of the second one that Charles Chilton wrote. Great spacesuit, by the way. We're going to have a spacesuit contest soon. I'll be announcing that. But, um, but, it's, but Journey into Space is one of my favorite radio shows ever. And if you go on to YouTube or Google, I'm sure you can find it and listen to it. But particularly The Red Planet is wonderful. It's about a manned mission to Mars. It's about what they find there. Very mysterious, very fun, wonderfully acted, wonderfully written. Uh, sound effects are great. It really takes you there. And again, it's not the expected story. So it it's really is worn well with time. And um, so I, I think you'll really enjoy it. And then finally, in terms of books, I suggest you read The Martian Chronicles. Here's a first edition of The Martian Chronicles. And it is signed to me. 
by my dear friend Ray Bradbury. There it is. And uh, it's, one of, again, one of my favorite books. It's a, if you haven't read The Martian Chronicles, do so. It's uh, Ray essentially grew up in uh, Waukegan, Illinois. Then his family moved to Arizona for a brief time during the Depression when his father was trying to find work. Then they moved to Los Angeles. But the mixture of the Waukegan, Illinois, Midwestern, uh, uh, sort of small American town, uh, upbringing, plus what he saw in Arizona, the Indians on the fade after the, uh, you know, they, they'd been decimated in the 19th century. This was around maybe 1930 uh, or so. And um, and the, and the deserts, the, the, the desert landscape, that became Ray's Mars, essentially the collision of those two worlds. And then at the same time, uh, when he was a kid, uh, King Tut's uh, tomb was opened up, and, there, and he saw the magnificent mask of King Tut, the burial mask of gold and lapis lazuli, and uh, he... Um, he made the Martian masks, uh, the, 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 the Martians were based on that. And uh, so it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful novel. I highly recommend it. It really stands up. It was a series of short stories he wrote that he then wove together into a one whole narrative. And uh, he, um, they, they, they were wonderful EC Comics adaptations of those stories, wonderful radio adaptations of those stories on X minus one and Dimension X and Suspense and Escape. You can again find these on the internet. But, but so those three things, uh, missions, uh, Journey into Space, Red Planet, and the Red Planet, and Martian Chronicles. That will give you a wonderful Mars experience uh, after you uh, have decided that uh, that the first could uh, could be um, be better. And uh, and if you still want to keep delving into Martian stories, then you could watch if you haven't seen it, The Martian with Matt Damon. And there's also a novel, the original novel by Andy. Um, whatever his name is, Andy Weir, uh, which is, again, wonderful. I, I highly recommend it. It was written before the movie. And then if, you're, if, and then if that whets your appetite for more stories about people marooned on Mars, there's, again, one of my favorite films from when I was a kid, Robinson Crusoe on Mars, starring Paul Mantee. And it was, uh, it's really fun. It's directed by Byron Haskin, who directed a movie called War of the Worlds, which, of course, is based on another of the classic Mars stories, by H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds. So it all kind of connects together. And then I, also in England, I found this, this book from the 50s, No Man Friday, which is another story of a man marooned on Mars. So, so, so definitely Robinson Crusoe on, the Mar on Mars, The Martian, War of the Worlds. You can't go wrong with any of those. And, uh, and so that will give you, uh, you know, days and weeks of, of, of Martian fun. <laughs> so, uh, so that's about it for now. But I just kind of wanted to put all of this in context. There are going to be more and more and more stories set on Mars. There have been many, many very bad movies set on Mars. But, uh, but I just mentioned some of the ones that I really like. And, uh, and, and again, the first is not bad, it's just not the definitive Martian exploration story. Maybe the second season will be, we'll find out. So great, so it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi. If you uh, haven't subscribed to Mr. Sci-Fi, please do. We're trying to hit uh, 100,000 subscribers so I can utilize the uh, YouTube studios to, to shoot Space Command. Uh, we, are, um, we already have, with 15,000 subscribers, we have enough to shoot there and do post-production there to a limited degree, but we want to get more and more and more of their equipment and their sound stages and all that stuff. So there's many more of Mr. Sci-Fi um, uh, podcast to come and you can take this ride with me and uh, you can also be on my Facebook page and check out all the Space Command stuff and on my Twitter feed but um, but that's it for now so thanks very much and oh by the way if you look behind me there's Red Planet by Robert Heinlein which is one of his juvenile books and um, and of course all the major science fiction writers wrote about Mars whether it's the uh, Green Mars, Red Mars, Blue Mars trilogy of Kim Stanley Robinson or uh, you know the Arthur C. Clarke's you know um, uh, Red Planet Mars or whatever there's there's many books to search out so that's it for now we'll talk again soon thanks a lot Mr. Sci-Fi out bye